gonna do a quick little speed build. It's not gonna be a fast build for me because I have to remove the CPU cooler, clean off the thermal grease, I have to take out the power supply, take out all the ties that I use to keep the wires cabled to the case. I gotta remove the graphics card. Oh my lord. What up Techies and Gamers, it's your boy Jermaine back with another new video. Welcome back to Tech Toys and Gaming. And in this video, I have a very pleasant and special surprise. Uh, today, I'm finally gonna do it. I'm finally gonna do that 1660 Super MSI video card upgrade to a 3080 overclocked Eagle MSI NVIDIA Force Universal Juice. So the main and juicy reason, well, there's probably a couple of reasons why I'm doing this, but the reason I'm here recording this and sharing it with you is to show you how much of a significant performance upgrade would happen if I took my 1660 Super, which I had built in a previous video. Check the link right here is the PC built for the ITX machine. I built an ITX uh, AMD platform, super tiny mini PC into a very tiny case um, with a 1660 Super uh, MSI video card coupled with the uh, AMD Ryzen 5 uh, 3600. So I found that those components for a, a very low, you know, medium low budget uh, gaming performance machine, uh, running at 1080p, 60 FPS, you know, a lot of the games I was getting 100, 144, Destiny I was getting like 200 FPS at some points. So um, it's a pretty capable and powerful machine as is with the 1660 Super. However, however, with the juicy bump to a 3080, With a bump to the GeForce RTX 3080 video card, um, I actually got a nice deal on this card. Um, I think anything under $800, $900 on a card these days in this kind of climate, if you can get your hands on something like this, um, consider yourself one of the fortunate ones. But yeah, I got my hands on one and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna stuff it in that little tiny little ITX machine that you see. Wait, whoa, oh, almost dropped it. <laughs> the little tiny ITX machine that you see right here. Right? I'm gonna stick it in this little guy. It's very small. It, I might have like about 12 inches of space to fit into that case. Um, this card comes in just slightly above 11 inches. So, you know, to make up for like the kind of the framing and everything that has happening inside of that case, um, I don't even know if this is gonna fit. And I'm wondering if I'm gonna have to actually go ahead, take the plunge, take the jump, no bungee cord, and have to actually go ahead and purchase a new case for my whole entire build. And that would really superbly, extremely if I had to do that, um, but I am hopeful and wishful. I did take uh, measuring tape measurements with uh, measuring tape measurements of the case prior to buying this. So, uh, and I actually checked online and checked out the specific size of this guy. And it seems that this guy will potentially fit. So um, we're gonna try it. We're gonna see. And if not, this will be a complete fail of a video and I will still post it if it fails or not, right? Now. The tricky and funny thing with upgrading to this, I'm gonna drop that. The caveat and caviar what? of upgrading to an RTX 3080 in this particular machine, you know, I built it and spec'd it out and made all the modifications and bought the components revolving around what was gonna support the CPU as well as the MSI graphics card, uh, 1660 Super. So I went ahead and bought a power supply that would take significant of an upgrade, maybe to a 2080 or a 3060, but these graphics cards, you need a minimum of 750 watts on your power supply. And I only had a 600 watt power supply built into this machine, which, you know, went overboard and it supplied, you know, was basically served the computer well. Could have probably upgraded to a 2080, a 3060, but these 3080s are great. With that, I had to go ahead and upgrade my power supply as well. So it's kind of a slippery slope when you're buying a component such as this, you want to upgrade to a 3080, RTX graphics card, be mindful that you want to make sure that your power supply can support it. You want to make sure that your uh, your CPU, your processing unit can actually keep up with it, right? So yeah, I went ahead and upgraded to a Corsair 850 watt power supply, fully modular because, you know, there's barely any room in this case to have a non-modular and I tried installing a, well, I did do it. I installed a semi-modular power supply, the 600 watt one that's installed. Um, but it was a little, a little bit of a tight fit because the cabling didn't fit the way I wanted to. So it was kind of like obstructing the fans just a little bit. It worked out. 
the, the term, the term, the thermals, the thermals, the thermals. The thermals turned out to be really good. We're gonna have to upgrade it though, but I'm glad it is um full modular, right? 850 gold. That's a nice crispy, still in the plastic seal. Oh. In addition, you know, I was building the machine initially as a kind of a budget machine. So I kind of skimped out a little bit on the pro what? I kind of skimped out a little bit on the heat sink, the CPU cooler, and went with a pretty low budget RGB kind of a dark flash uh, cooler. Um, does the job, and sometimes I can see the temperatures rising a little bit too high, sometimes reaching thresholds of 80s and 90 degrees Celsius. Um, that's a little close, too close for my comfort, right? I went ahead and threw in an additional fan cooler. Now, I really would have liked to actually do some liquid cooling on this. However, because this is an ITX and the case compartment is really tiny, there was really no space to really put the heat sink with the fan and the cooling and everything to fit to fit at all inside of this. I thought about it. I thought about getting uh, very thin millimeter, you know, like a 12 to 15 millimeter uh, fans on the heat sink, um, as well as a relatively thinner heat sink. But even with that, it's still just not enough space. Now the CPU cooler, the dark flash uh, cooler I have in there now, it's all aluminum, there's no copper. So aluminum is good in some sense. The uh, base plate of that specific uh, CPU cooler is, you know, is also aluminum, so there is no copper built into it whatsoever. So I invested in an upgraded CPU cooler that incorporated both aluminum as well as copper, and I went with the... So I went with the Cooler Master G100M, um, low profile CPU cooler. Comes with a nice, big, cool, bulky column of copper right down the middle and along the edges where the you know the surrounding fins are all aluminum so not to mention that it has my favorite rgb right so we're going to go ahead and install this to get a better cooling system for the processor we can kind of minimize throttling you know if it's happening at all but we'll check that out and there you have it so let's go ahead and install this <laughs> bad boy right now into this tiny little case and if it doesn't work i'll share it with you right here and then we'll just skip on to the next video and buy a case and you know, install that. It's gonna get installed one way or another. All right, so if you stuck with me this far, let's go ahead and build this machine. I'm gonna do a quick little speed build. It's not gonna be a fast build for me because I have to remove the CPU cooler, clean off the thermal grease. I have to take out the power supply, take out all the ties that I use to keep the wires cable to the case. I gotta remove the graphics card. Oh my lord. But for you, it'll probably be a minute or two. So um, sit back, relax, enjoy, and let's build this thing right now. Station, drop that.
Pick as a Gamers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something and stay tuned for the continuation of this episode. Uh, the next video, I'm going to actually go into the actual performance bump demonstration on this. I want to do a little comparison between what the 1660 was and what the 3080 is now. Stay tuned.